In this video, I'm going to show you how to mod the PlayStation 3. So the year is 2022, Sony is winding down support for the PlayStation 3 system, and you might be interested in modding it so that way you can keep your game library alive long after Sony has discontinued it, as well as being able to um, just back up stuff that you own digitally or do homebrew on it. Well, thankfully, the process for getting any PS3 system modded to allow you to do this these days is relatively simple, and I'm going to take you through it. But just as a disclosure, I take no responsibility if you happen to screw something up with your modded system, something goes wrong during the mod process. You do this procedure at your own risk, so do be aware of that. There could be small potential risks involved. If you are willing to accept those risks, let's continue. Alright, so the first step to modding our PS3, we need to have a FAT32 formatted USB drive. It could be an external hard drive, flash drive, SSD, shouldn't matter a whole lot, it just needs to be in FAT32 format. So for my purposes today, I've hooked up my external SSD onto the computer here, and I'm going to get it formatted as FAT32, so I'm going to use the program GUI format. I'm going to make sure my USB drive is selected and then quick format, and I'm gonna start the format process to getting this in FAT32. I'll have a link to this program in the description below if you do not have one that you already like to use. But there we go, my USB SSD is now in FAT32 format. Next, we are going to need a modified system update file, so that way we can exploit it. That allows us to basically open up the PS3 to all of the fun potential things we can do with it. And again, this works on basically every single model of the PS3. For my example today, I'm going to be using my PS3 Super Slim. So this one didn't support original custom firmware like uh, earlier Slims and Fats. But if we head over to ps3exploit.me, this is the site we're going to be using throughout this process. And there's a couple warnings here to make note of. Do not enable factory service mode with this. You will break your PS3. And do not install CCAPI with HEN because that will also break your PS3. So big red warnings here, don't do these two things. But what we are looking for is right here, 4.89.1 hybrid firmware. So just click on this link. It'll bring you to the PSX Place forum post with the download link. So just choose one of the downloads available here. So I'll just go with Mediafire since it's the top one, don't really care. And then just tell it to download. And once you have that hybrid firmware package downloaded, just go ahead and get it extracted. It's in zip format, so you should be able to use just about anything, but I'm just going to get it extracted here. And inside the folder, we have our MDS checksum to verify the file is correct. So you can scan this through and compare the checksums if you are needing extra security. Otherwise, just open up your USB drive. And inside the USB drive, make a new folder. Name it PS3, all caps. And then inside this folder, make another new folder and name it update, all caps. And then inside this folder is where we're going to place our new hybrid firmware update file. And once that's ready to go, we're set to move over to the PS3. Now over on your PlayStation 3, get your USB drive inserted and you should see it pop up on your XMB menu just under all the different channels. And one thing I recommend doing before getting started if you're planning on backing up any digital content, make sure that your account is activated on the current PlayStation system. So you can head up to account management, system activation, and then you can make sure that your PS3 is activated for games content. So mine's already activated, so I don't need to worry about that. But anyway, scroll on over to the settings tab here and find system settings. And then from here, go down and select system information. And this will tell you what system software you're currently running. If you're on firmware 4.89 already, the update process is going to be a bit different than those that are not on 4.89. So for my video, I am already on 4.89, so we're gonna have to do it the hard way. But for those of you that are on firmware lower than 4.89, you could just go up to system update and update via storage media and apply the update like you normally would. And then for those of us that are unlucky and are already on 4.89, just go ahead and shut off your PlayStation system. And now from here, 
Go ahead and turn it on, but keep the power button held until it turns itself back off. So, I'm going to have the beeps here for you to listen to, so I am now turning it on. That first beep resets video settings, so just keep holding it past that. And that last beep turned off the system. Now, go ahead and turn the system back on again, and keep holding the power button. And you should hear a beep, followed by a double beep. Just like that. Once you hear that second beep, let go of the power button. And then from here you'll be asked to connect a controller with the USB cable to continue, so do so. And now we're going to go down to option 6 in the recovery menu here for system update. And this is going to ask us to connect a storage media that contains update version 4.89 or later and press the start and select buttons at the same time to update it. So, start select. And then once the update data has been found, it will prepare to update the system, and then you'll be able to install it momentarily. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead in the video to the install process. Alright, so eventually you will be brought to the System Update menu, PS3 System Software version 4.89.1, Hybrid Firmware, Hybrid and Exploitable, press the PS button to use a wireless controller. And then once the controller is turned on, it'll check for the update data, and the install process will begin. And then we just scroll through this stuff, accept the user agreement, and press cross to start the update. And then the update will begin installing. So I'm just going to speed this up a bit. And after the system update has finished installing, your system should reboot. And if you had to go into the recovery menu like I did, you'll have to redo your video settings. So it'll probably pop up being like, hey, you're using HDMI. Want to uh, get your resolution to look a little bit better here? Well, at least eventually it'll say that. There we go. Yes, I would like to use HDMI. Thank you. Hooray. All right. And now we're ready to move on to the fun stuff. So, from this point forward, I'd recommend having a second throwaway account to use rather than your main PSN account, because Sony bans PlayStation 3s based on the account, I believe. So if you have a throwaway account to use that is not related to your main one, you'll just go ahead and use that one. But let me go ahead and create one here real quick. So I want to create a new user. And I'm going to name it Homebrew because that's what I intend to use this profile for, is to do a bunch of homebrew stuff. So there we go. This is now Homebrew. Whoops. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to log into my Homebrew account here. And now I'm going to go to the internet browser and open it up. So there's a couple of things we need to do to uh, our browser here. So, not that. If you press triangle, go up to tools, and we're going to change the home page. We're going to change the home page of our browser to use a blank page. And press okay. Next thing we're going to do is go up to Tools, and we're going to clear out the cookies, search history, the cache, and then the last thing we're going to do is come to Confirm Browser Close, and we're going to turn this off. And once we have all that done, we can just press Start. And on the keyboard, type in PS3 exploit dot me and press start and you'll be brought to the PS3 exploit website. And now from here, go up to PS3 hen and 
Press cross on Hen Auto Installer. And it's going to download this ps3hen.p3t file. That's what we want to see. But what we're going to do now is press select on our controller and add the auto installer to our bookmarks. And once it's added in, just press circle to close out of the web browser. And then load back into the web browser. This is a very memory uh, picky process to do this exploit, unfortunately. So once you've loaded back into your blank browser, press select and then select your PS3 Hen auto installer bookmark. And it'll try to save it again, but we don't have to. It's already downloaded. Now just press cross on auto install Hen. And the process to install it will begin. You might see it air out a couple of times. That's perfectly normal. Just try again. You might need to close the web browser and try it again. But just keep trying until you see it installing the latest version of Hen, just like this. And then once the download's complete, it will install it. And once the install is complete, just press circle to back out. And then from here, we're going to reboot our PlayStation system. So just turn it off and turn it back on. All right. And while we're just waiting for that to reboot, just a quick break here to announce or give shout outs to rather the people who guessed correctly how many controllers are currently sitting on my desk. And I got to say, I don't think I quite live up to some of your expectations and I will work on doing a lot better. Because light, I don't have anywhere near 50 controllers on my desk, but I kind of wish I did now. But anyway, the correct answer to how many controllers are currently sitting on my desk is 11. We have 11 controllers sitting on this desk at this current time. Three N64 controllers, five PlayStation controllers, uh, Saturn controller, uh, DualShock, DualSense rather, just... Mm, good stuff, good stuff, but the current answer is 11. Didn't name all of them, unfortunately. Just a quick little thing there, because we don't want to take too much time, but congrats to Sage Blink for getting that one correctly, as well as Doogie McBain. You both guessed 11. Big shout out to both of you here in the current video. All right, but keep an eye on that community tab. We might do more of these, because it's kind of fun. So, till next time. And now when your PS3 restarts, you will be greeted by the PS3 boot up, but now it has a hen logo where the PS3 logo used to be. But to use your new install of PS3 hen, just open up your homebrew account. And over on the game tab, it should default to this by manual, but since we created a new account, it's going to the what's new page here. So you'll see an enable hen button here on the game tab. So you just click on this. And it will enable your modded system, essentially. So every time you boot up the system, you just click cross on this and it will get it all turned on and ready to go. But if you want to have it just go to this page automatically, you go over to system settings. And then for display what's new, just turn this off. So that way it'll default to the enable hin option every time you turn on the system and log into that profile. But from here, you can begin installing packages for homebrew applications like file browsers, uh, game managers, emulators. So you just go into package, install package files, and you can store package files in on your internal PS3 hard drive, or you can just put them on a USB drive. And if you click on standard, it'll show you the root of your USB drive. Anything you download from PlayStation Network, like uh, PS1 digital games that you own, they'll show up in here now instead of on the main game screen. But that is essentially the modding process. But just as another warning, using Homebrew can get your PlayStation 3 account banned. So if you're using PS3 Hen, every time you go to log back into your main PlayStation 3 account, make sure that you hold down R2 and Triangle to disable custom firmware and delete the history files. So that way you can log into your main PlayStation 3 account without any issues. 
do be aware you might still encounter a ban if you do this, even with deleting the custom firmware history and syscalls. Again, this is a process that isn't without risks, and these are the risks you accept by doing this process. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much as always for watching this tutorial. I hope it helps you get your homebrew PS3 projects up off the ground. But I do have a couple of big favors to ask here at the end of the video. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like this tutorial, and hit that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I have loads of content still coming, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and help keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers, thank you for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. But until next time my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.